What you doing on talking? I'm DHC, and this week Crunchyroll released their editorials best 100 anime from the this previous decade. And what should be an interesting list turned out to not be as great as I would have thought, at least in my opinion. In this video, I'm really excited about because I finally get to disagree and show why my opinions are different and maybe weird. But from what I've seen, there is a lot of good anime that's missing from this top 100. The list was weird too. One, it's pretty much the it's their editorials pick. So it doesn't necessarily mean best. It should have been the editorials top favorite from this decade. I don't know. It it's not the best. The list is already misnamed. And then the list is weird because it's all alphabetical, but then they still broke it up into two articles with the top 25, which was still like alphabetical. So the I don't know, the whole thing was weird. It was just interesting to see what they put and why they left a bunch of stuff out, which I want to know why they left a bunch of stuff out. But in my opinion, my, not going to say best, but my top favorite anime of this past decade, I knew pretty much most of them wasn't going to be on there because I know my taste is usually different than everyone else's. From this previous decade, my all-time favorite anime is High School of the Dead because I love zombie stuff, I love anime, they fit perfectly together, and it can still is a solid zombie anime it just it has way too much fan service to make it taken seriously I guess and then another one I knew probably wasn't going to be on the list but I really liked it is the Kawaii Complex I love the anime and the manga and yeah I mean it's I think it's hilarious, and it's a nice slice of life kind of anime style, but yeah, I don't know, I just found it by accident, so I figured it wasn't going to be on there. One that surprised me, that I really thought was going to be on there, that was one of my favorites from a few years ago, is Kids Niver, and I love that one, and like, Crunchyroll hyped it up a lot, so you would think they would put it on the list, and it was a solid story. It got a little weird at the end, but I don't know. Um, one that, I don't know if I would say it's my favorite, but also really surprised it's not on the list, is Baruto. It's like, a lot of people give Baruto shit, but I really like some of the stuff they've done with it. I thought it's clever how they have kept it its own story, but still do things similar to Naruto. Just pretty much through a perspective of a different kid that he's raised. Man, I could get into a whole bunch of that. But yeah, it was really weird that Barto wasn't on there. Um, Black Clover was, which a lot of people give shit for too. So to see that on there and not Barto, I don't know. It's a it's a weird thing. Um, yeah. So I there's plenty others that I really enjoyed that didn't make it on the list, and I thought they should have. Um, Your line April wasn't on there and that seemed to be loved by a whole lot of people the other thing about the list that made it weird is they put anime movies and the movies are great and I've seen almost all of them they put on there um, but I felt like I should have been a different list because they're definitely judged differently they're both anime but a movie and an anime series is too different to put on the same list. And, I don't know. I do agree with the movies, though. I definitely would put all the ones I saw that were on there. I would put them on there. So I agree with that part. I just would have made it a different list. I don't know. I don't know what was up with that. But, yeah. Uh, a couple others I definitely have seen enough of to say I wouldn't put them in my top 
100 favorite is Dragon Ball Super and Attack on Titan. Neither of them I like. But I do know a lot of people like them, so I understand why that's on there. But yeah, a lot of others. Like, oh, another one is, is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? Um, I've been reading the light novel series, and I love the light novel series. So, if you read those and watch the anime, the anime is a little disappointing. But, the anime is a lot better than a lot of the other picks that were put in there. My other beef is a lot of them seen really recent, like within this year or last year. And it's, I don't, I've seen a lot of them and I thought they were good. I wouldn't put them in my top 100 either. But it's also seemed like, okay, what, it's like, what was the most recent thing they saw? Okay, that's what they picked. It's like, I don't know. It's there's a whole lot of disagreement I have with this list. A whole lot. And yeah, it's me being a little petty because my choices didn't get picked. None of my choices got picked. Even though there are some I really like. But, like, My Hero Academia. I love it. Space Sandy got in a top 25, which I forgot about that show and forgot how much I liked it. And, but neither of those, I say, are my all-time favorites of this decade. But I still really enjoy them, look forward to them. But yeah, that's my beef with that. But, what do you think? If you made your own top 100 favorites, what would be on that list? I thought 100 anime is hard to think of. Then I realized I watch that many anime, new anime, every year. And it's like, I could do it. So, if you all have any interest in what I think my top 100 list is from 100 to 1, not alphabetically, because that's dumb, that it defeats the whole purpose of numbers, you should let me know. And tell me what your favorite are. And I'll tell you what my favorite are, because I will talk about them all day. So, moving on from that, I have done read, watched other things this week. I finished a manga that I've, you know, read on Crunchyroll because whether or not I agree or disagree with their list, they're still my favorite app to watch anime on and read manga on if I read it digitally. So, the manga Love Theory. It was like 40 chapters. It was short read. It is great. There's still so much fan service, but that's kind of the premise of it. It's edgy, it's hilarious, but there's like, it's all about these love theory rules and trying to get the main character, gotta buy a ghost, to fall in love, or get, get a certain girl to fall in love with him, and just get him, you know, not to be a loser when it comes to women. But a lot of the rules actually seem legitimately like they could work. And one of the first rules they teach is in conversation when listening to the girl or it doesn't have to be a girl, I guess, saying, wow, that must be tough, is going to be sure to get the girl or other person to like feel like you're actually listening and enjoying the conversation. And then I was like, huh, what if I went and try to try these rules in our life myself and then I can make videos of that it stopped though immediately because the next day I started this manga a girl I was talking to went in the middle of our conversation wow that must be tough and it blew my fucking mind and I'm pretty sure the conversation stopped because I couldn't think of what else to say it was the weirdest situation. There's no way they have also read this manga. But the manga gets weirder, so there's no way I could do the rest of the rules because one's like turn into a dog, and I'm like, mm, no, can't do that. But overall, it was a super enjoyable manga. <laughs> like, I would recommend it if you just have an hour or two. It's not long at all. Anime wise, for what I've watched this week, my top three as normal 
Of course, Dr. Stone, which seems to be one of my favorites, is uh, Magna. He finally had a redeeming moment with Senku and Chrome. It was actually really nice, and it makes you like his character a little more. And, you know, that's going to happen eventually like it does in every anime. Any meathead, bad guy, antagonist-like character always comes around to be a better guy. So, whatever. But, the even more precious moment of this episode is that they surprise Senku for his birthday. And they've been hinting at it for a couple episodes. And it was great. They give him a telescope and an observatory. He's caught by surprise. Alex is caught by surprise. It was it was wonderful. So Doctor Stone this week, of course, won for me, since apparently it's a competition with among anime. Talking about my other two picks this week, um, Chihara Fura. The uh, Tai Chi is in the middle of the competition. They managed, and I thought this was put together amazingly. They put together an episode that focused completely on Tai Chi and he was hardly in it. He hardly really did anything but they made it intense. They made it him have some development and the people around him and also he just seems like he's pretty much sweeping up in this tournament right now. And then my Hero Academia is reaching a point of action because shit is about to go down except for they barely started in this episode so you gotta wait for next week. But yeah, that's my anime for this week. I of course watch more because I watch about 20 series each season. But what are you watching this week? What are you reading? Did you agree with my list? Should you make your own list? Should I make my own list? I might anyways. But I am DAC. Thank you for watching, and bye.